Hello, welcome to church again. It's a nice time in the presence of God. So I'm sure you've been anticipating this opportunity to be in the presence of God again. Right, so before we proceed into the uh, service for today, I'd like us to just bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you for this grace you have given to us to be in your presence this day. We appreciate you, Lord, for all the things, all the benefits we've enjoyed in you, the blessings, even the ones that we're conscious of or not. Daddy, we say may your name be exalted in Jesus' name. And we thank you because you have brought us to your presence to be blessed again this day. And we pray, Lord, as we be parting, parting from this meeting, let your grace be with us. Let all our, our desires be met in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So, this month is a month of celebrations. As you can see, it's Christmas season. And we'll be having a lot of celebrations. So this month, we'll be talking more about Jesus Christ. But before we go into the message of today, I'd like us to first join the praise team for a moment of worship and praise in the presence of God. I'll join you back shortly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to give praise unto the Lord. He never changes, he never fails, he remains the same forever yeah. and ever. He's the God Ooh. that we serve, the one we love to adore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the same yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. You never change. Yesterday, today, forever Nobody loves me like you You are the same, you are the same Yesterday, today, forever Nobody is like you You never change, you never change You never change oh, Yesterday, today, forever
Welcome back. I'm sure you enjoyed yourself in the presence of God, because I did. It was a nice moment to praise God and worship Him. All right, so let's go to get to the business of the day. So we've been talking about the birth of Jesus in this month of December. And, and as you know, talking about the birth of Jesus in December is a season of celebration, the season of Christmas. Well, we have lots of fun and also nice moments to praise and worship God. So today's topic is events surrounding his birth part three. The events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ part three. We've talked about it in the previous uh, Sundays. Before we go on, I'd like us to take our text. It's from the book of Luke chapter two, verses one to 20. So I'll be reading that quickly for us. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. 
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in his swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with, there was with this angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things he had heard and seen, as it was told them. Praise the Lord. What a nice story of how Jesus Christ was born. So the story was telling us how it was time for census, when everyone had to go back to their home cities. So coming back to their home cities meant that everywhere would be filled because Bethlehem was a place where they had a lot of people. So it was, it was about the time when Mary was giving birth to Jesus Christ. So when he had given birth to Jesus Christ in the stable, there was no place to put him. There was no place for them to rest because all the inns, all the guest houses, all the places they could you know, take to sleep had been filled up since everyone was in town. So they had to go and keep the child in a manger. Now, for some of us who do not know what a manger means, it is the place where animals that are kept in cage, in cages where they feed from. You know, you have cattle, you have camels, you have sheep, donkeys, where they feed from, feed, where they feed from. More like a cage where they put their food. That's where Jesus Christ was kept because there was no place to keep him. What a humble kind of birth that Jesus Christ went through. Then another word there was sensor. So sensor means, sensor means counting people. That's what it simply means. So when a government decides to count, to know the number of people in their country, they do it in all around the world. So it's called census. So that was the event that brought them to Bethlehem, where Mary gave birth and there was no place to put a child. So they had to put a child in a manger. 
Now, knowing this tells you that Jesus Christ had a very humble kind of birth. And if he did that for you, if you remember, the reason why Jesus Christ was born is so that he can save you and I. You know, he came to die for you and I to be our savior, to be our redemption, to be, to, to, to be the one who gives us a new life. So if even he himself went through that life just for you and I, then you should understand that there is a lot for you to do as well so that you can benefit from all the good things he has brought for you. Remember, John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish, will have everlasting life, will experience eternity, will have all the good benefits that Christ uh, has, has told us about. Because he said that if we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, that all the things we want in this world, in this life will be added unto you. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. So I want to ask you this question. Are you sure you are one of those who inherit all the things that Christ has brought for us? This humble birth that Jesus Christ had to go through to come and save you and I, are you sure you are part of those who benefit from it? Because I am sure. That's because I'm a child of God. I mean, for you to get something from, your dad, from, from somebody, you'd have to first know the person, right? I can't go to your dad and say, I want a huge sum of money would ask me, do I know you from somewhere? So first you have to be his child. But I can go to my dad and ask for money. He will give me the money because he's my father. What I'm trying to tell you is this. You need to first have a relationship with this God, with Jesus, before you can get the benefits that Jesus Christ has for you and I. Especially in Christmas like this, where we have a lot of things to do for fun, for enjoyment, you know? So if you are here or if you are listening to me, and you know that your way is not right with God. You're not so confident that you are a true child of God. You cannot call him your father whom you can ask anything at any time. You're not so sure that if the trumpet should sound or if there is rapture right now, if it should happen now, you're not so sure that you'll be going to heaven with Christ. I'd like you to just put your hand on your chest. You know, it's a sincere decision Within you, between you and your God. Just put your hand on your chest right now. Put it on your heart. I'd like you to just bow your heads. Close your eyes and begin to and say these things after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I confess my sins to you. I believe you are the Son of, Christ, of God who died on the cross for my sins, who, do, who took all my sins away. I believe you are the one who was given birth to in a very humble way, who was put in a manger where animals have been are kept just so you could come and save me. Who even had to die for me to be saved. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior. I ask, Lord, that you write my name in the book of life. Give me a new life. Teach me your ways. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, you are now a new creature, that all things have passed away, that all things are now new for you. Praise God. So if you believe that, you are saved. And I want you to just congratulate yourself if you said that prayer, because God has changed your life. You are now into the family, the joint heirs with Christ those who are children of God just like Christ. And there are so many benefits for you. Praise the Lord. All right, before we go, I'd like us to read, our, our, to take our memory verse. The memory verse is taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wow. So I pray that the grace of the Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus. That all that you ask, or all the things that are in your heart, as you bring them to Jesus, 
they will become solutions in the name of they will experience solutions in the name of Jesus. We pray that anything in your heart that God will grant solutions in the name of Jesus. We pray as you go out in this week, the grace of the Lord rest on you. Whatever it is you lay your hands on, whatever it is you set your minds to do, the Lord will make it successful for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations, you've been blessed in the presence of God. So uh, this is the end of our meeting for today. So I'm sure we'll be seeing me again next time. So bye for now. Thank you.